with Steel here with Elite Dangerous. Now, Elite Dangerous is uh, a game I recently got about a few weeks ago, and I love space, I love science, I love exploration, and this game is just brilliant. I really love it, but it does have a bit of a steep learning curve, and when I first got it, I didn't know how to do anything, and it's really difficult not to just die instantly and crash your ship inside one of these hangars. So, uh, a lot of the tutorials online uh, miss a few things here and there, and uh, I wanted to make this series just to stop you falling in the same pitfalls as myself. So, we're going to start the game by looking at the controls. Now, I use a keyboard and mouse, as I'm sure a lot of people will, and again, there's a lot of controls, but we're going to go through them and show you my setup. And now there's no right or wrong setup, but the one I'm using works for me and you can sort of see for yourself and maybe get some tips as well. So the first control here is your. Now your is like turning your head left and right and I've set this to the X axis. So if I move my mouse to the left, the ship will your will turn to the left. Uh the Y axis is the vertical axis and I've done that to pitch. So pitch is like tilting your head up or tilting your head down. So my setup, the mouse sort of works like a first person shooter. The direction I point is the direction my spacecraft uh, looks. Mouse sensitivity, again, you can change this to become less sensitive or increase sensitivity. I've got it right in the middle. It's quite nice. Uh, mouse rate, uh, I don't like this, I haven't set it on, so I've got it off, but it, what it does, it removes the mouse cursor after you zone in on a point, it moves it back to the center, and I feel this doesn't quite give me as much control, so I've set relative mouse off in both cases. Uh, a dead zone, now the dead zone is helpful, there's a little, if you increase the size of this, you'll have a dead zone inside your uh, field of view, and the larger it is, it, you can move your mouse inside this circle and nothing's going to happen. Uh, if it's really small, you move your mouse a little bit and the whole spacecraft will move. But you have a little bit of a dead zone, then you can sort of have a little bit of play to move your mouse somewhere. And uh, especially when you're cruising, it's really helpful just to be able to rest your mouse and not have the ship constantly moving all the time. Uh, the power curve, it basically... When it's like this, it changes the uh, sensitivity of the mouse the more you move it. So the further you move your mouse, the quicker things will move. Now I wasn't quite uh, comfortable with this, so I kept it here and it just worked for me. You're going to have to really play around with this to see what you like. Next thing is rolling. So you roll the aircraft is you know, turning around. Uh, the central point that you're looking at is a, basically a roll. Now I've set mine to A and the D keys here. Uh, I find this really works, so my mouse is used for looking and I roll using A and D. Thrusting, this isn't moving forward and backwards, this is uh, sort of RS sort of systems that push you to the left and to the right. Now I've set this to Q and E, so if I want to strafe left and right, I press Q and E. Now I've changed uh, the W and S keys from you know thrusting forward and backwards to thrusting up and down. So this is going to be really helpful when you're docking and I use these all the time and it also in combat. Pressing W, uh, the aircraft will rise above the ground and pressing, pressing S it will lower itself down. I've actually changed the throttle increments here to my mouse wheel and I've set it to about 12%. I found this is just right. Just by flicking the mouse wheel up just once, I can smooth forward a little bit and just by rolling it a few times, I instantly get to 100% throttle or reverse throttle. Really helpful for when you're mining and for those little increments when you're coming into land. You just, I find it's a nice sweet spot, but again, you might find something for yourself. Um, I set zero speed to X, very helpful again if you're flying around and you suddenly want to stop. The X key is quite nearby, just a tap of that and you'll come to a full full, uh, full stop. And hitting the 5, 6 and F for 50%, 75%, 100%. I don't really use it, maybe sometimes I use 75, uh, 100% with the 7 key and you know if you just want to get out of somewhere quick. Um, but it's useful to have these instead of scrolling the mouse if you're feeling a bit lazy.
uh, I don't really fly with flight assist much yet, but it's really useful if it's nearby, especially in a dogfight. I've tried it before, and you can do some really funky maneuvering. The Z key is really nearby, just a quick tap of that. You can turn your ship around backwards while still maintaining field velocity. Flight assist, basically, we'll look at this in the game, but the game does model real uh, Newtonian mechanics, so if you fly in a straight line, uh, and you have flight assist off, you can turn your aircraft to face the other way and you'll still be going in the velocity you were before. With flight assist on, the aircraft has its own retro thrusters, which means you'll always be more or less flying in the direction you're pointing, much like a real aircraft uh, would in an atmosphere. So flight assist makes the air your spaceship fly like it's flying with wings in an atmosphere and often this is a lot easier to understand but it can uh, sometimes be helpful and advantageous to have this off though most of the time for safety reasons you want it to fly it with it on engine boost gives you a quick boost uh, I use the tab key again it's really near my fingers on the WASD keys uh, and the frame shift is set to jump for J so that's a nice doesn't need to be too near your keys you can your hand so you can move across there targeting I've set mine to my other mouse buttons um, but it's really up to you if you've got any extra it's really useful uh, cycling next ship you can see what's coming next around you uh, but targeting straight ahead again just if you're in a dogfight you want to see what you're looking at or if you're mining and you want to see a canister or a piece of rock or ore that you're selecting just click the one in ahead of you H for highest threat pretty pretty standard if you're in a dogfight it's there you know which one's got the most uh, largest weapons the most health the thing you need to get rid of first uh, caps lock very useful for sliking through because maybe sometimes you don't want to get the biggest baddest ship in the sector maybe you want to find the weakest one and you can cycle through all the enemy ships especially if you're looking for an easy kill to gain those credits next subsystem Y again rarely use it but it's useful to have if you need it gun sight set to leading it's just how I like it you have to experiment with yourself primary weapon secondary weapon next fire group N so in the game you can set different firing groups so sometimes you might have lasers uh, set to both of these buttons but maybe you also have a uh, mining laser so you press N and you'll switch from your weapon loadout to a mining loadout a useful tool to have deploying your hard points again we press U for this one um, don't really need it that often often you need to a quick button just to retract them all if you want to sort of go into super cruise or jump out silent running uh, at the moment I've set it to the delete key out of the way um, usually when I'm going for silent running it's because I'm doing a, a run up at a station with a lot of contraband goods so I don't need it too near my uh, controls my WASD keys although I've yet to experiment of using silent running in combat situations because when you turn silent running on it's really hard for anyone to detect you and if you drop a few uh, seat hinks perhaps getting a target lock on will be really difficult so I've got to experiment with this and see what we get but at the moment it's set to delete key and of course the heat sinks incredibly useful uh, I really like heat sinks and they're very cheap as well so I highly recommend getting some especially in combat especially if you wander too close to a star and suddenly find yourself burning up you can just drop one of these Ship lights, L, useful. Some uh, stations are very dark, especially the smaller ones. And when you're mining, if you put the lights on, you can see how close you are to one of these asteroids because it can be a bit deceptive as you can't uh, lock onto them at the moment. Increasing sensor ranges, again, page up, page down. This is useful um, for getting a better view of the place and the surroundings. Ah, oh, now this is important. Now this diverts your power. Uh, from your systems which is really your shields the weapons and your engines and I've set these to one two and three so when you press these buttons uh, if you want to get away it's really near my AS uh, WASD key so I tap 
two a couple of times, my engine's full power, now I've got behind him, I need my weapons, press three a few times, and these correspond to uh, the position on the actual heads up display, and for uh, sets and resets the distribution. So I find it's really helpful to have these at one, two, and three because such easy access uh, from when you're flying a, a spacecraft. Cargo scoop, I've set mine to uh, backslash. Useful little thing to have. Uh, I don't really use it that often while flying uh, with WASD, but in mining it's good to be there. Jettison, uh, it's a delete key. Um, plonked it there, just out of the way. I don't really want to jettison cargo very often, and I don't want to accidentally press this button, so it's put out the way, so it's not really going to hurt myself or anyone. Uh, landing gear, gear for G. Yeah, a good place to put it. Easy to remember. Uh, shield cells, I haven't actually had any shield cells yet, um, so I really need to do something with this. I'll think of something later. Uh, chafe, left shift. Have, I'm not sure if this is quite broken yet. I've used it and it hasn't seemed to help me that often. Uh, so this will require some experiments. The game's still in beta 3 at the moment, so uh, some bugs are expected. M for map, so we get to see the galaxy map. Very useful. P for pause. Uh, F1, F2 and F3 for the targeting panel. So F1 is the targeting panel on your far left. The 2 is the one on your right. And 3 is the sensor panel in the middle. And you press these, you can zoom in. Enter for communications, 4 for comms, F4. And again, spacebar for selecting, but WSD keys to maneuver around these panels, these user interface panels when you have them up. Spacebar, again, for looking around the aircraft. I'm very jealous of people with the Oculus Rift, but unfortunately, don't have one yet. So, spacebar will allow you to look around the cockpit and around space in general. Galactic map, mainly I use the galactic map by using my mouse keys, and we'll look at this uh, later, but you can also use the TGQE keys to maneuver around, and WS keys and such, pretty standard. And that's it, these are the controls that I use. Uh, I'm you know, very happy with them myself, I use them and I think they work, uh, but of course you may have your own uh, opinions. Please let me know what you use, I'm always looking to improve uh, the system. Um, but when the future tutorials, will all, I'll be using this setup, so when you see I'm deploying landing gears, you know which button it is that I'm using to uh, deploy them with. Alright, I'll see you in the docking hangar.